Okay, this is part two, not fully completed, but we ripped out all of the uh, return ducting that was slowing everything down. Uh, of course, I knew there was, we'd probably find a return that actually goes to the master bedroom. I'll have to come out of here or someplace and get it back up there. But now we're just using the one channel over to the trunk line. Of course, there's big gaps over here we found when we had this apart. But, um, the chase going down through there, they offsetted the, um, the joist for the stairs. They missed it or miscalculated, so they just moved it and the HVAC guys forgot to seal that up. So there's a big hole over there. Um, but like I said, this is, we, you know, we brought this down now, bringing it in, uplifted. Um, overall, we've just about doubled the um, return power before we removed that and had this hooked up, the old ducting hooked up to lift it up. We we're already at about 450-ish um, across the return. And now just by taking that out, we've increased it another 200. Now we're about 650. Um, on the pulling of the main uh, trunk line. So this is just some of the standard stuff that we, you know, when we have the opportunity, we try to do to make the system work better overall. So anyway, the next stage will be removing this trunk line and cutting it down as you can see you know a good six inches and cutting it down to match this one and then we'll do the same we'll taper it you know to that one but that'll be the final stage to get more throw so By lifting the furnace completely up to the ground, we get the maximum airflow being pulled in and it can throw better. A lot of companies will just take a, they put a little box about six inches, eight inches, and then they still have a big cut in the side. And does it help a little bit versus it sitting on the floor? A little, but this is the proper way to to run them and um, when you're installing a furnace so anyway thanks for watching